Welcome Survivor. This video is going to be covering how to set up a dedicated server in 7 days to die during Alpha 20 experimental phase. It's fairly similar to how to do it during stable phase, but there's a couple of extra steps that you want to take into consideration. You can run a multiplayer server straight through the client when you have friends joining us, but it's usually better to just have a dedicated server for performance and also means that you're separating the client from the server which helps in case the client actually crashes or has issues because the server might not be affected now it might not be the best way for everyone but you can also use a hosted option if you're having a lot of problems with your dedicated local server i do have an affiliate link to ping perfect below which has a 10 percent discount voucher with a 48 hour trial so you can test that out if that works better if you don't don't get the server up and running, that's always an option, but I would definitely suggest try to get a dedicated server up because that works really good for small groups when you don't really need it 24-7. When you need a 24-7 uh, host, having a hosted solution, in my opinion, is the better way. So how do we do this? Well, go to your Steam client. What you want to do, you want to switch on to tools here so you actually can start seeing things, assuming you have bought the game. Then you go to the dedicated server here now you might not want to necessarily go and let's see here you want to do properties and then you want to go to betas because you want to go down here to latest experimental unstable build if you don't do that if you simply do an install you'll get the version for 19.6 but you want to get the latest experimental which is alpha 20. so you select that and install that's going to take a while and i'm going to put it here let me put it on my c drive there we go. Let's put it there. It's, you know, it takes 12 gigabytes. So it's not too bad. Uh, it, it's not as big as some as servers and games which has a big map, which will be 50 or 200 gigabyte. All right, let me hit the download there. For some reason, it was pausing or didn't work the first time. Not really sure. Maybe because it's experimental, but hitting download and everything and the client then should download it. And while that is downloading and installing, if you do enjoy my guides, do consider dropping me a like on the video, maybe subscribe as well, it's free. Enable notifications by ringing that notification bell as well, that means that you're going to be notified with all my new videos. Steam has now downloaded and installed, and let's go and check here, we'll see that if I hover over it says latest experimental with the correct version. Now you shouldn't just launch it, hold on, hold on, go to properties again, go to local files and browse. That opens up the folder where everything is installed. And the, there's a few files here that you really care about. The biggest one is serverconfig.xml because that configures your server to your preference. So open it up and it looks like something like this. Now, the suggestion always when you first try to figure out how to run a server is to change as little as possible and just try to get things up. There's a lot of configurations issue items in here. You definitely want to change the password. You might want to make sure the visibility is zero so that it you know it doesn't show up to everyone globally. Uh, for instance, max player account, you might want to increase that. You might want to change with, let's go down here, whether you're using Naviscan and what the seed is and the size of the map. However, first time you run this, just run it on default settings. Maybe, you know, with the exception of server visibility so that you don't have randoms actually connecting to it. The reason being is that if you change these ones and you mess something up, the server will not start. And then you're down to troubleshooting and you don't really know what the issue is. If at least you can get it up with the default settings like this, you know that the server is running and any other problems you're going to be having later on is going to be because, be because you changed all the properties. So in this case, we're going to leave it like this. We're going to put a password. We're going to put in one just in case I like to have passwords on my servers. A lot of the properties are fairly self-explanatory with the comment that is on the right side. So go ahead and just review them. We're also going to go to Updata and go into 7 Days to Die and then they'll go down to Saves. Now, some of these files will not necessarily exist unless you've started the server once or played the game once. What we're looking for is the server admin.xml. Now, if you don't have any of these files, it might be because you haven't generated anything, the game hasn't saved anything. In that case, start the server once, then shut it down and these things should appear. And we're going to open up server admin.xml. And the important part of this file is that it allows you to make yourself admin on your own server. So what we're going to do, we're going to go down here to user Steam. We're going to remove the comment tags 
and you're going to need to find your Steam 64 ID, the decimal value that looks something like this. And you can go to a place like Steam ID Finder or something like that in order to find it. And then you put that in and you save the file. That means that in the server, you will be an admin because if you don't do the step, you won't be an admin on your server because this is where the server goes to validate which player is actually able to use the admin commands. And if you're problem finding your saves, just simply go to the start menu in Windows at the bottom left, open up and then type in percentage, update that percentage and it should open it up. Once you've configured serverconfig.xml, take a backup. The reason being is that if Steam updates your server, which will happen during experimental, it will overwrite any files that you have in there. And you don't want to lose your server config because that's where you have your game seed and everything. If you lose that, it's gonna be a little bit challenging to get back into your save because you need to match the same seed for your game world and all that. So make a copy once you're done and then you can even either start it within the start dedicated or bad, or you can simply just launch it here. You'll see it's starting up like this. You'll see a bunch of things as it's loading. It's going to ask you to open your firewall. I would definitely make sure you select allow access. Otherwise, you're going to have problems with people connecting. They said there's a telnet exception. I don't think that should be an issue. We'll find out. A few moments later. And we're now ready to start the game. You can do that either from just simply launching it here. Or you should be able to, in the folder itself, just run start dedicated.bat. The good thing about using start dedicated.bat, it means that you don't actually need to have Steam loaded on the server that you're actually running the server on, and it will load up just fine. And you'll see a bunch of things here. What I was starting to see here, um, and I wanted to show you, I was getting IO exception in the Telnet client. So let me kill this and I'll show you what I did to fix it. This is something that I haven't seen in alpha 19, but it was appearing in alpha 20. So we're going to go back into the server config.xml. And what I did was that for one, I'm going to not disable Steam Network working because that's useful when you're playing with your friends. And we're going to go down to Telnet and we're going to set this one to false. I'm not really sure why this one was causing an issue, but um, after I removed that, I set this to false. Everything worked much, much better. So let's start this up again. You'll get the console there. Yes, close that one. And things should be loading in much better. So let's give it a while. So what you're looking for is start game done. That means things are ready. That one used to be at the bottom before, but now they have some other things that are here. Uh, the server is actually running now. If I do help, you'll see I get a bunch of information I can run in the console. So that one is running fine. If you're still having issues with things loading, which I actually had myself as well, go to your app data and your saves. If you've been playing Alpha 19 before, you might have a save game for Navis game in case because I'm doing default, that is actually called my game. And you might want to make sure you delete that before you start the server in Alpha 20 because what happens is that the game goes to Naviscane, then it goes to my game, and of course that's the default in all the settings. And it says, hey, I found something, let me try and load it. But that's a 19 Alpha 19 world with different settings and everything and just cost crashes and crashes. So I went in here, I deleted it, and then it started up cleanly. So now we have a server running and let's go in and connect to it. So we're going to do localhost and the default port is 26900 and it's going to give valid password. We're going to do one because that's what we set it to. And you can see it's obviously contacting the server. It's trying to verify stuff like that. If you're having issues with ASC, consider disabling that in the server config.xml because sometimes it does cause an issue. And if you're just playing yourself with friends, of course, no one is going to hack in anyway. And uh, in your case like here, I'm actually stuck on the ESC verification. So I'm actually going to go to the file. I'm going to do false here. I'm going to save it. And that means I'm going to have to restart the server as well. So I'm going to kill the client. I'm going to have to go to the server and do a shutdown. And that shuts everything down nicely. Don't just kill the process. Go and do a shutdown if you can. And then I just start the server back up again, which will take another couple of minutes. Then we're going to log in and getting much better at least because we're not having that ESC issue and we're coming into the game here let's cancel the initial these ones and so cancel you see I'm in it's working I'm on this server right now so we go to F1 to DM and it denies oh because I did set myself as admin see that's the problem if you don't set yourself as admin in the 
a server admin.xml you can actually be admin so make sure you make <laughs> make sure you edit that file i didn't put in my steam id because i wasn't expecting to need it here if you're having issues with things not starting up properly make sure you go to the data info and then you can actually open up the log files here the log files tend to say when something goes wrong for instance i'm going to say one of the ones that where things were crashing let's have a look at that it was basically saying that, hey, you know, something is not going right and I'm basically exiting. And it, it will give you some information if there is a problem. Uh, for instance, if the server is not starting up cleanly, it will tell you that it's shut down generally. If there's some errors, it will tell you there as well. And now we've started up the server. We have loaded into it as well on the local network or lo local PC. It doesn't mean that your friends will be able to access from outside of the network because it means that you have to do port forwarding. And that's something that people usually run into trouble with. I'm going to leave a link to the Valve software wiki for 7 Days to Die, which has a bunch of information about some of the settings and everything that you can read through as well. The important thing we want to go down to is down here, where it says that you have to open up up TCP ports depending on if you're going to access it remotely uh, 8082 but at least 26900 you also have to do UDP 26900 to 903 has to be done and if you don't know how to do this they actually have a link to some information about how to port forward if you go to this site it has a lot of different brands and everything that has specific walkthrough of how to access it. it if you can't find it you have to find your manual for your brand for your model of the router so what if you still have problems and you want to do some troubleshooting well it's a few tips to get into that one, make sure you start the server with the default settings as much as possible. You, know, you might have to disable the talent and everything, but at least don't change the to a randomly generated world. Don't change the map size and everything. Try to start with Navisgain because if that one starts up, it means that at least the server is working and that's not the problem. Secondly, make sure that you can connect from the same PC or the same local ad network. If you can, it means that everything is working fine with the server and any other issues you're having is outside of that then go and verify your port forwarding on your router make sure that it's done see if friends can connect if you invite them through steam if you have removed that uh, disabled steam networking they should be able to join on you in the steam client as well also make sure you have accepted the windows firewall prompt and if not add the game to that because that can also cause an issue some isps block incoming server traffic most do allow access but some actually that i've run across do block incoming access and you might have to talk to your isp if they are doing that if your game server doesn't show up in the server browser it's usually because your port forwarding is not working properly because the server browser basically is trying to ping your server and if your port forwarding is not done it actually can't see it sometimes it will still show up if you have steam networking enabled because it can sort of tunnel through that as well and make sure that it's visible again that will only work when you are online other issues that people have is when they are trying to generate the map through the server is that if you're doing too big a map it just fails in that case you might want to generate it in the client and copy it over and use it if you're generating a map in the server it can actually take quite a long time depending on how big the map is so leave it running and if it seems to like it's get, getting stuck then try to generate in the client make sure you have enough ram generating maps is extremely ram intensive i know when i'm doing take a map it can take between 10 and 20 gigabytes and it can take a lot of time some servers can take like two hours to generate a map so it really depends on the specs of your server but hopefully this is enough for you to get started. There are some caveats like I showed that uh, things can go wrong when you're using the experimental branch. It's slightly harder than when it's stable, uh, maybe because some of the settings don't work straight out of the box. I'm a little bit surprised to see the talent problem because I've never had that issue happen before in the previous experimentals. But in this case, I had to disable it so that it wouldn't cause an issue. But uh, go ahead, give it a try. And again, if you can't get anything up and you really want to play with your friend, do consider a hosted solution. I run my servers on a hosted because it's something like 11, $12 monthly. And if you're a few friends, that means a couple of dollars each. And it's definitely worth to have a server running 24 seven, 365, and you don't have to worry about it. And if you do go that route, do check the link below, my affiliate link and my discount code. It does give a 10% recurring discount that will save you some money in the long run. See you again, Survivor. 
special thanks to the great patrons supporting the channel. If you would like to join the Vedic community and support these videos, do follow the Patreon link.